Hello, now I'm going to talk a little bit about um, the planning phase when you are managing the process. So basically I'm going to emphasize two different approaches to do it. But what they have in common actually is that you need to look at the work you, have, you need to do and divide you into tasks and identify the dependencies between tasks. So it's important when you identify the dependencies because actually when you are going to assign the, the tasks to the time, you need to know which one should occur first because of the dependency that they have. Okay? This has been done uh, with a lot of tools. Okay? We'll find uh, software tools probably really complex that deal with this. And, uh, well, the technology that's these Gantt charts, so we'll know about Gantt charts and probably we will learn about these in a more advanced uh, uh, course on uh, process management. And so Gantt chart, as you can see, what they do, basically they identify activities and they just identify the dependencies. And of course they need to estimate the, the time. So as I told you already, when you do estimation, basically you can do this by decomposing the, the work you need to be done into small tasks and then estimate by estimating the overall uh, process, project, by summing the estimation of each one of the parts, okay? So, you, you do this and then you, you have this type of uh, Gantt charts that are quite common where you see the dependencies, you, for, for instance, you can identify critical paths, which are the critical paths, are the ones that you have basic no freedom. So, if uh, your estimate about this, one of the tasks in this path is not right, though these will change the will really have impact in the final uh, uh, when, when the project is going to finish. Okay, so so that's basically what people do, and then they have other types of charts where they just assign these tasks to people, and of, they, of course they consider, as I told you already, they consider the the, the people skills and the type of task, so what is required in terms of competencies from the point of view of the tasks. So this is what is common between the, um, the two approaches, but actually there are two different approaches. One I would say that is bottom up, but uh, the top down. In the top down planning, what you actually do is that you just uh, try up front before you start to, to start a project to plan everything, okay? So this is belief that you can foresee everything that's going to happen and you can spend quite a lot of time just decomposing and defining dependencies. So you can spend a lot of time. So there's a big investment in the planning. There's a very nasty side effect of this big investment, which is actually that if you spend a, a couple of months planning, when things really start happening, so when the project starts and, and the, the actual execution of the project de de deviates from uh, your plan, well, you know, it's a matter, a matter of your ego and basically you just uh, say that uh, it takes time that you do not trust your plan anymore. So there's a psychological effect about uh, spending too much time planning, at least in software where it's very easy that your plan is uh, quite quickly you start deviating from the plan because there's a lot of uh, human factors when you develop software. So some people propose a more bottom-up approach to planning, they call it agile planning. And the main idea here is that uh, they depart from the idea that the plan actually is going to change. Okay? And the plan change because requirements change, the client priorities change and the team changes. And what if, so that basic, that's what I've told you already about uh, E systems, P systems, okay? And so if this happens, why do we need a plan? Yes, yes, we need a plan. We need to use the information we have now to divide it, to define what are the activities that we're going to perform. But not 
to spend too much time doing, doing it because maybe it's not going to be like that, but just to decide what to do next, what is important to do next. So to, to have a, a to foresee in a short distance, of course, but at least to know in this period whether when we start executing the, the, the project, whether we are deviating or not. And then, okay, it's important that we do not get ruled by the plan and continuously accommodate changes. Actually, this is the type of approach that we are going to see when I'm going to describe Scrum. Okay? Good? Thank you.